today we are going to see how an intersection shader works. I think it's an important technique to know and it's very useful for when creating shields, barriers or force fields for when they are intersecting with geometry around. Which is exactly what I did on these videos, but I actually never explained it in depth how an intersection shader works. So, let's jump right into this, I just wanna say that these videos are possible thanks to my patrons and if you wanna support me I left the link below and you will get access to a huge library of visual effects that you can use in your games. And before we proceed it's important to know that I am in the Universal Render Pipeline and we must go to Edit Project Settings. So in Graphics you can find your scriptable render pipeline object, select it so it is highlighted. In the inspector you can turn on Depth Texture and Opaque Texture, especially the Depth Texture so we can get access to the camera depth. Once you have that on, you can go ahead and create a shader. With right click in Shader Graph we can select the URP Lit Shader Graph. We can then rename this intersection, for example Lit, double click to open Shader Graph. I'm gonna dock it right here, make some room, exactly, and well, it is lit so it is influenced by lights of the scene. If you don't want this to be influenced by the lights, you can set it to unlit. But it's important to set the surface type to transparent. Other than that, we are good to go. And the first information required for this to work is the scene death. Let's with spacebar search for the scene death node and let's set the sampling to I. This node returns the camera depth buffer, how far away are opaque objects, basically, and it returns a normalized value between 0 and 1. Imagine that there's several lines shooting from the camera all over the place to all directions. Which means, for example, if the depth buffer of the camera is 1000 units and you have an object at 500 units, the returned value will be 0 0.5 for each pixel that represents the cube. But this, on its own, will not create an intersection. In fact, for that we actually need to access the object vertex position in relation to the screen. Fortunately, we have a screen position node, which needs to be in raw mode, basically in its pure form, without any previous calculations. And now, with these two nodes, we can get an intersection. Imagine that this is the camera depth buffer of a scene with only a plane. If to that we subtract the vertex position in screen space of our cube, we are left with a hole. But if we invert this, which we will do later, we will get the depth only of the object. But first we need to split this screen position so we can get access to the alpha, which holds a grayscale value of the vertex position in relation to the camera. And while we are here, if to this alpha we subtract a value, we will get an intersection depth, how thick we want the intersection to be. We can create a float, call it the interception depth, with a default value of 0 0.5, for example. Alright, so we have everything we need now to finally create the intersection. All we gotta do is subtract these two. And if we connect this to the alpha input and save it. Let's go ahead and test this out by creating a material from the shader with right click and assign this material to our cube. And as you can see we have this white which represents exactly that and if you play with interception depth you can control how far it is. But if you notice the interception depth is working in the opposite direction, supposedly zero would mean no interception, no thickness. So we just need to remap this, right? We just need to invert this. Here, in the interception depth value, the float, we are going to say the values that come in, which are between 0 and 1, or more, are going to be the opposite. The 0 will be 1, and the 1 will be 0. Replace this connection. Another thing that we can already take care of is the color. But since there isn't anything connected to the base color, we won't see it. So let's connect to the base color first. 
save this. And what you will notice is, once you play with intersection death, as it is, it is kind of the opposite. This should be inverted. It shouldn't be bright on the top. And that's because after the subtract node, we can use a 1 minus node, which will do exactly that, and it will invert any given values. And we can replace the connections to the base color and to the alpha, and then press save asset again. And as you can see now, it's working properly. And the cube is transparent, which is as expected. And as a good practice, we should clamp this so the values don't go below 0 or above 1. You could as well use a smooth step. I'm gonna use a clamp, just because. Replace this connection and it's still the same as you can see. Now we are able to add color, so let's add a property up here, a color property. I'm gonna drag it up here and I switch this to HDR mode and set the color to white and alpha at 100. The way we use this is by multiplying with a clamp. Connect the base color, but we need to split this so we can access only the alpha and connect it to the alpha input of the fragment function. And if you save this asset, what you will notice is that now we are able to control the color of the intersection. And you can pick whatever color you want, a blue for example, you can play with intensity, you can play with interception death as well. And you may be wondering why you only see one face, the front face. And it's very simple. For example, if we go back to our shader graph, in the graph inspector, we can turn on allow material override, so we can have control over all of these properties directly in the material. And once you do it, if you go to your material, you will notice that we have this render face, which is set to front. If you switch it to both, it will render the front and the back faces, as you can see. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the intersection effect. I'm going to show you now a few examples. For example, what I did here is add a little noise. So it kind of moves, kind of wiggles a little bit, you know. Watch many of my tutorials. I use one of these techniques where we use a noise and we scroll it. And I simply multiply it with intersection and that's pretty much it. For example, more recently I have used this in the sci-fi barrier tutorial, this one. And if you look directly to the shader, what you will notice is that we have the exact same setup down here for the intersection. What I then do is add this to a bunch of things, a border, a mask, a dots, pattern, a noise. And if you go watch that tutorial, you will notice that, but at least now you know how to create the intersection pretty well. Another use case for this is, for example, on the, on the unique projectiles volume tree assets, where, as you can see, every time this hits something, we have that sphere as the same technique for the intersection. And like I said in the beginning, the Ryan Art recreation that I did, the shield from Overwatch, used the exact same technique, basically. So it intersects with everything that it touches and creates this nice glow, this nice highlight, instead of simply cutting the geometry. This is actually a pretty cool shade. If you go watch that video, you will learn a bunch of things, of tricks. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for today, for this video. I wanted to go a little bit more in depth about an intersection shader. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you want to get access to all of these projects that I've just shown you, this is just a little example of what is available on my Patreon page. You will get many more projects there. It's all available there for you. If you guys decide to support me and keep this channel going and keep me going, that would be awesome. I want to take this moment to also appreciate each patron that supported me last month. And as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Alex Speak, Alexander Brazy, Alvman, Aviat Tobali, Axel, Bluebird, Bonehead, Kruby Dooby Doo, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Diaku, Diana Simonian, Diego Marx, Duitran, Effect Yellow, El Sharif, Easy, Fang Striker, Fairy Online, Giri Andre, Giulio Bevenuti, Goblin Plague, Grub Lab, Guilherme Trindad, Goop and Zoo, Jason Marrero, Joseph Ballantyne, Casey Miller, Cabron Campi, Leanne Holt, Nutuli, Lim Green, Luke Hammer, Lucas Rocha, Manuel Mora, May Met Chakush, Minazuki, Mosen and Seth Darden, Nicholas Morion, Oitsk, Pong, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Robert, R. Lee, Travis McCollum, Verisuta, Will Hughes, Will Pulliam, Yeoshua Villas, Dong Mao Dong, and Ching Pyong Lin. Thank you all very much for your support. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope to see you 
on the next video. Thanks. Bye.